All right. So, hello, everyone. Um, and I'm Marina Gonzalez, and I will be talking about innovation for ELTM management, right? So, as everybody knows, ELTM is English Language Teaching Management. Um, and the to, to be able to start talking about these things, because innovation seems to be uh, a word that we use constantly, uh, I thought that it would be interesting to start playing a little bit with words, and this is what we tend to do as, as teachers. And some of the first combinations that come to our mind are the idea of management innovation, innovation in management, or innovation management. If we think about this, truly the first two are somehow the same thing. So the only one that somehow differs is the, the idea of innovation management, which is a specific kind of, of, of management for one particular area, different from the others that are basically how to manage uh, things that, that, that come to, to us. Hmm? But uh, part of the, the, the situations that tend to appear is that we associate innovation with the idea of some strange or idea that comes to our mind, the, the, the product of uh, brainstorming, uh, sudden uh, creative concepts that disrupt with everything that has been uh, applied till till the moment and truly in uh, in our field it's quite difficult to find uh, something because we are teaching english or teaching english besides other languages so we're not going to change what we do we will probably change different ways in which we do things uh but not a dis a, a total disruption uh, and this is important due to this uh, basic uh, consideration uh, I would like to share with you the fact that innovation is based on three pillars um, and the, the pillars of innovation are complexity I'm sorry are complexity well our comp uh, competency strategy and management okay and before i go deep into each one of them uh the i would like to to mention the fact that um why should why, why should we consider these uh, three pillars and basically the reason for this is because innovation applied into an organization needs to comp consider a complexity it's not as i mentioned a little bit a couple of seconds ago that we suddenly come up with a, a, a brand new idea and we start from scratch whenever we talk about innovation in, in in from a managerial point of view we already have an organization running we have people working with us uh, there are an, an um certain rules, uh, there is a culture or a combination of cultures that prevail, there are tasks, jobs, etc. So innovation needs to consider all that into play and considering all that implies a complex, uh, a complex understanding of reality. Mm -hmm. So then, knowing now that it is a complex approach to, uh, to innovation, we can start considering each of the pillars uh, separately, all right? Competency means that whenever you are trying to innovate, you should focus on what, uh, on your expertise, on what the organization knows how to do, right? That is, if you specialize in, or if you have developed uh, a program of English for youngsters or you may develop into English for babies, right? Or a different uh, variation of courses for uh, for your for for your audience. But if you 
work in that area and you're a specialist in that area and suddenly you come up with a course in business English, well, there is a, a way of seeing the, um, uh, the possibility of innovation that seems to be not on solid ground, okay? And the reason why I chose the pictures below is because uh, you don't, they are fields of high expertise, all right? I mean, suppose that you teach English at schools and suddenly you're asked to develop a course for writer, uh, for bikers. Well, I mean, you, that is a big jump and it's outside your field. So if you want to innovate in, in that area, you need to devote a specific team for that. The same happens if you were to supposed to develop uh, English for filmmaking, right? Filmmaking industry is subdivided into a number of other fields. So really, you cannot consider these things as just another course, all right? You need to invest, you need to get the people who are competent in that, or if not, invest in getting people to be competent in that area, okay? So as you see, there are lots of considerations when we think of how competent you are in order to innovate in a particular field, all right? Moving on, the, 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 the other point is strategy. Strategy is crucial from our um, point of view as managers, all right? It's not only having a, an objective, but also creating, devising a logical plan to be implemented and considering the possible failures that may happen at different stages and being able to evaluate and adjust so that you don't divert too much from your final objective, okay? And management is the final stage. We, that is where innovation becomes visible. That is through managers, through the people who lead, support and evaluate the process, you will be able to implement the innovation process in the ELT organization. And of course, we work mainly with teachers and teachers are reluctant to change in general terms when, depending on the organization, of course, all right? But if we're talking about schools, they tend to repeat formulas. Uh, so then uh, leading is a key um, aspect of the situation, right? Now, as I mentioned, as I started mentioning briefly, because I have very, very little time, uh, when we talk about innovation, we talk about innovation in the world of ELTM. And you can see very briefly here a sketch of what the world of ELTM is, which is basically, basically made up of schools, private language schools, universities, US embassy or British council supported programs, which are the ones that may be uh, tend to innovate, okay, because they are developed for a particular purpose, all right? And sole inventors, right, such as, for example, teaching in hostels, conversation cafes, etc., which are also areas that, since they are not so restricted by the competencies of the organization, tend to feel freer for certain innovation projects, but at the same time, they are marked by innovation themselves, all right? And uh, so, going a little bit deeper into innovation in ELTM, but now knowing what the field is, how it can be seen. Well, innovation can be seen basically in two specific areas, in the administrative sector and the academic sector, all right? In administrative sector, it's mostly within marketing and administration, and this is something that has been growing in the past few years, mostly using social media for advertising, uh, using Google Ads in, in, or, or other um, trackers for personalized advertising, the idea of using mobile interfaces for administrative batters, all right? Even starting from the basic um, WhatsApp uh, group uh, groups or or other possibilities, uh, and then intranets for organizational and administrative issues, which is a crucial thing. Uh, basically, people like, uh, like working in countries like Argentina, where if you work at the at, at a school, 
uh, or, or, or a university, everything seemed to be or used to be paper-based, creating intranets so that then your um, marks that you give in, in, in midterm tests, etc., are directly loaded onto the system, are a real innovation and uh, something that should be seen as um, relieving the load of teachers uh, that, that oh, in comparison what, with what paperwork would used to, to, to produce. And last, to round off within the time frame, uh, academic management is the one that whenever we go to teacher conferences, etc., and we find something, uh, somebody talking about innovation, uh, they tend to apply innovation within uh, the area of academics, all right? Uh, and mostly they talk about mm, uh, about methodology, all right? This is the basic um, connection between innovation and the academic world. But from the managerial point of view, I have already mentioned all the things that can be done in the administrative part and also in academic management, the, the manager does not only see methodology, but also curriculum, staff development, and here is where we talk about visionary continuous professional development, and you can uh, associate this with Gabriel diaz Machiali's work, all right? And of course, technology. So as you see, the academic manager, all right, needs to be a person who understands all of these var uh, variations that take place and should be able to cater for the needs of all the different actors in the place. All right? So, rounding off, remember that disruptive in innovation is rare, that it's not all about creativity and brainstorming, that process and strategy are crucial, and that managers must be able to meet the demands for effective innovation to take place. Thank you very much and goodbye for now.